Hello, welcome to another amazing interview in the Creative Entrepreneur Series. I'm your host, Bob Baker, and as always, I want to encourage you to get on the VIP email list so you don't miss any of the upcoming interviews. I've been, on average, posting one new one a week, so if you want a regular dose of inspiration, please get on the email alert list, and all you have to do is if you're watching the video version of this, there should be a link to the site where you can sign up somewhere on the page here, whether you're watching on YouTube or my site or wherever. If you're listening to the audio podcast version, then all you have to do is go to DIYCareerManifesto.com. That's all one word. And there should be some really obvious links there where you can get on the email list. And when you do, you also get a big, fat, free sample of a book that I'm working on called The DIY career manifesto the unconventional guide to turning your talents and know-how into a profitable business so get on the list stay inspired let's keep in touch and now here's this week's amazing interview Hello, welcome to another episode of The Creative Entrepreneur, and I'm really excited to be interviewing a visual artist uh, from Portland. Her name is Flora Bowley. Uh, hi, Flora. How are you? Hi, Bob. Great. Thanks. Fantastic. I'm really excited uh, to uh, to be interviewing you today for a number of reasons. And I wanted to actually, I did not tell you uh, prior to hitting the record button, sort of how I came to know you and, and come to, to reach out to you to, to be a, a, a guest. But actually, a, a couple, I don't know, two or three weeks ago, I was at a Michael's, you know, in the art supply store here in St. Saint, in Saint Louis, because I'm, I'm actually, uh, even though I'm known as a musician and an author, I'm actually am kind of a, a part-time visual artist. In fact, that's those are my paintings on the uh, on the oh, wall okay. behind me just like you have yours nice. there yeah. in your in your <laughs> studio. So I was at a Michaels getting some paint supplies and I always wander over to the art books, you know, just to see what's going on. And there was this cover brave intuitive painting and it kind of caught my eye and I, I picked, picked it up and I was like really intrigued by your message and and your artwork and because it, it was more than just like an instruction book. It's like more of like a mindset sort of a sort of a book and and um and and so i said hmm i wonder if she would be interested because all the people i've interviewed thus far uh in this new series i've actually known from anywhere from two to ten years you know she's the first person i didn't know that i reached out to and so you (laughs) stranger you you, you hold that (laughs) honor uh and so and so yeah i'm really i really that's how i came about and i went to your website and like an amazing website that you have and, and you're doing all this cool this cool stuff so, um, so what I'm going to do is I'm just going to like read a little, some little snippets here that I found on your website, and I'm going to ask you to fill in some of the details about your background Great. and how you got to where you are, and then we'll go into our official list of questions. This, does that sound, okay. this sound cool? Sounds so, good. Let's do it. So, so Flora, it's, it's, it's pronounced Bowley, right? You, that's right. Yep. Not Bali, I guess, which I guess a lot of people. Not Bali. Uh, it's, a, it's a internationally celebrated artist, a workshop facilitator. I think you actually do workshops around, around the world. Um, as yeah. I mentioned, author of Brave Intuitive Painting, a visionary and an inspirationalist, which I, I love that term. <laughs> I'm not sure if you coined it or, or, or what, but I love that phrase. <laughs> Thanks. I just, I had a lot of people always say, you're so inspiring. You're so inspiring. So I just, one day I was like, I guess I'm an inspirationalist. So it, it works for I me. Think it yeah. <laughs> and then on your, uh, yeah, on your website says her soulful and transformational approach to painting and living has inspired thousands of people across the globe to let go, be bold and unfold. I love that line too. It sounds like a song. It should be. If it's not. <laughs> uh, as they move through fear and welcome joyful, spontaneous expression back into the creative process. And then I think maybe on the very top of your homepage, it says, I believe, you know, from you, uh, the creative process should be a joyful one, a time for connecting to something greater than yourself, moving through fear, embracing the unknown, honoring intuition, and opening up to a world of soulful inspiration where anything is possible. And so I just I just love that message, and it ties in perfectly with the theme of this, you know, new interview series about people taking their passions and and sharing them with the world, and then, God forbid, finding a way to make a living doing it. You know, and so uh, and so obviously, yeah. There's more than just like I said, painting <laughs> techniques to what you do. It's it is kind of a way of life, also, right? Yeah, absolutely. There's lots of metaphors and lots of parallels that can be easily made between the painting process and just how to live, how to be. Right. So. Cool. It's fun. <laughs> and so you, and you live that, and you and you teach it as well. And so, um, so, so yeah, you and I. Are you are, are currently a, a full time doing art full time? Is that correct? And- yeah, yeah. I've been doing art full time for about eight years now, and um, you know, it was sort of a slow progression to get there, but haven't done anything else 
in about eight years. Oh, so. That's 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 nice. Yeah. Yeah, I'm actually going on ten years of uh, of being uh, self employed as an, as an author. In about six months, I'll be celebrating that. So we're kind of in a similar boat there. But what, what, yeah. what is there any are there any details about your background that maybe I didn't cover there about maybe uh, how you got your start or kind of what or you know uh, anything we need we need to know about your journey before I get into the official list of questions. We may cover them <laughs> during, during the questions too. But sure, no, I'm you know it's it, honestly I never could have have seen, um, you know, how things are unfolding or how they have unfolded. I never saw that coming really. Like for, for most of my life, I just wanted to be a painter Mm -hmm. and I got there and I was selling paintings in galleries and making my living barely, but making my living doing that. And, um, you know, it's just been in the last three years that I started teaching and then was asked to write the book. And, um, now with the online course and all in the, you know, just all the educational aspects of what I do, that's all quite new, um, just in the last three years. So it's, you know, never something that I really like, um, aspired to, but it, it's, um, we can talk more about it, but it's, it definitely is an exact fit for, for who I am and what, yeah. what lights me up. So oh, that's awesome. And if, yeah. it doesn't, yeah, if it doesn't come up in the, in your official answers as we go through, <laughs> I, I do want to come back to the whole thing about expanding the, uh, the, the variety of things that you offer to people that are not yeah. only a way to serve, but it's a way to generate some income too. Exactly. As opposed to yeah. just being like, you know, just being a musician or just being a painter, you know, yeah. you can be a teacher, you can be all, all, all sorts of things. Um, mm-hmm. And so that's, that's awesome. So, uh, and, and, and so did you, I assume there was a period though, where you were um, wondering if you could ever get to the point where you could do this, make a living doing it. And, you know, maybe had you have to overcome the starving artist mentality and all that, that plagues a lot of people. <laughs> You know, I, I, when I think back on it, I'm, it's like, if I would, if I knew then what I know now, I don't even know if I would have like kept going on this path. Cause, um, it's not an easy one as I'm sure, you know, you know, to make, especially to make a living, just selling original artwork, um, is, is a bit of a tricky thing, but I don't know. I got it in my head when I was like 19 years old, I had my very first show at a coffee shop, like in the college town I lived in. And up until that point, I did not think I could make a living as an artist. I mean, it was not in my uh, consciousness or my story growing up that that was possible. I thought that was like reserved for, you know, like 10 people or something in the world. (laughs) Very special, like Picasso people. And uh, yeah, yeah, like not me. I was going to do graphic design. I was going to, you know, um, maybe do interior. You know, I was going to do something art related, but something Mm -hmm. much more you know, uh, sort of secure, I guess. And so I had this show in this coffee shop and I sold a few paintings and a light bulb went off. I mean, it really was just like that where I just got it in my head and I'm pretty strong willed that, wait, I, I could make a living doing this. Like, you know, at that point I think I was serving coffee and making, you know, $7 an hour. So suddenly I sold these paintings and it was like, Oh my gosh, could it be? Yes. And so I just, you know, I don't think I went through a lot of serious doubt um, after that. Like I just had, I had the vision and I was pretty practical about how I went about it. I had, you know, I I got this formula in my brain that I needed to make $50 an hour. um, So I only had to work 10 hours a week. That was like the formula I came up with at age 20. (laughs) And so I know. And um, so what that looked like was, you know, waitressing at fine dining places. And then I became a yoga teacher and then I became a massage therapist. And those, those were all things to, to eventually support me being able to do painting full time, which I just somehow knew in my heart was going to happen. But um, I knew that it wasn't going to happen overnight. So, um, so I sort of, you know, jigsawed those other things together for many years and, and did basically make about $50 an hour and worked about 10 hours a week. And then um, just slowly made more and more money um, selling my paintings until I, it came to a point where it felt really like safe, I guess, to jump into just making my, my money that way. I don't slowly let one thing go and then the next. So well, there, there's, there's a, cu- a couple lessons that come yeah. to mind. Just that little story that you told there. One is like to celebrate your early victories, even though they're small, they may seem to be short lived. Yeah. It's something that you can build upon and use that as the rock. You know, it's, it's amazing that you used that and didn't oh, have thanks. doubts moving forward beyond that because most people continue to have them. And then being really clear about a lot of people don't attach numbers to their goals or their visions, you know, where I need to make X amount per, per yeah. hour, so many hours. And that I think that's another thing that helps you sort of have specific measurable goals, maybe that you know whether you're hitting it or not. Yeah, you know? so, yeah I, I guess I just have that. I have that embedded, you know, practic- Midwestern practicality to me. So it serves, serves me well. <laughs> awesome. 
All right. Well, uh, that's a great uh, uh, introduction to who Flora is and her wonderful approach to uh, to art and and life. So let's kind of kick things into gear with the uh, list of questions I like to ask every uh, every guest. So uh, as you mentioned, you've been full time as an artist for eight years now. And so if you had to identify like three factors or three either you know beliefs or events or whatever that that were, were you know, uh, uh, responsible for your current status, um, what would those be? Well, I think, um, the thing that I always tell artists that are like asking advice is that, you know, having just a really intense passion for what you do is probably the most important thing. Like, I think that's the thing that's carried me through and probably the thing that allowed me to not have the doubts that we just talked about was that I just had to paint. Like as soon as I, figured out that painting was my thing, um, which was my first year of college. I mean, I knew art was my thing, but then it got specific to painting. Um, it was like, I, it was a soul piece for me where if I wasn't creating paintings, like I wasn't like fully like, you know, having my life experience the way that I wanted it to. So passion I think is the first ingredient and probably the most important. Um, I give a lot of credit to my parents, um, in this realm because they, they instilled this belief that I could do anything I wanted, um, even though I was kind of a quirky kid and you know didn't take the path most traveled and never have really. Um, they just always supported me, um, which I'm like forever grateful to them. So having that kind of support, which um, translated into um, belief in myself. So I just believed. I just believed I could do it. I believed if I could do it, you know, if I could keep doing it, that eventually it would work out um, was sort of my belief. And that kind of leads to the third piece, I guess, which is the dedication mm. to the craft. Um, like just I always tell that to my students now or, you know, sometimes people walk into a class and they want to they want to get it. You know, we live in this culture that's so like oh, yeah. fast and like I just want to I want to be good at it like now, you know, and. And I painted for for, I guess, 18 years before I ever started teaching. So you know, it's such a journey as with like any kind of artistic endeavor. It's like you have to just put in those thousand hours or whatever the <laughs> whatever the saying is about that. Um, and I've always been really good at that. I've always, you know, even when life has gotten crazy, I've always painted and just produced probably thousands of paintings at this point. So, yeah, That's passion. All- belief and hard work <laughs> those are yeah those are those are three obviously yeah three uh, uh essential keys to essential su- keys to success I was like so regarding the, the passion yeah i think it, it, it is awesome when you could tie how you make a living into something that you like feel compelled to do or maybe you feel incomplete yeah. if you're not doing it's so a painting and you said an art was just something you had to do to feel alive to be a full expression of who you are right um, yeah, absolutely. Now, now there are there are people that maybe because uh, I always I, I, I did a video uh, a while back about the um, about how you can like passion alone isn't the key to making a living because it has to, there has to be some overlap between what you're good what you're passionate about what you're good at but also a need or a want in the world you know our, our small at least a small yeah. segment of the population um that once to, was willing to, to spend money on that thing that you that you're passionate a, a about and so did you have to learn where yeah. that overlap was with your paintings and- well i've always i've always been really grateful that what i do naturally like what comes out when i paint um people tend to like and i know that's not you know like as like they like to buy it and put it in their house (laughs) and that is not the case for all artists um and i've i've never um i mean i say this and maybe there's some subconscious piece of me that that was filtered to make paintings that sell but i've never been motivated by that like i've always just my painting experience is very, um, it's like very soulful and very in the moment and very intuitive and I never know what's going to happen before it's happening. So there's not a lot of pre-plotting in order to like make a thing that sells. Um, so yeah, I, I just said I'm blessed in that way that like what my soul does is uh marketable i guess so and and i guess there has there has to be some kind of awareness as an artist i mean because you could paint in a vacuum or just in your your home studio or whatever and and paint to your heart's content but in some some way some ways you had to figure out ways to get them out so people see them so that the people who are attracted and and will will then if that money exchange happens so you have to have been willing to share them and and display them. that's a huge huge piece of it just being willing to put yourself out there um Mm -hmm. 
I sort of, I think I was born with a very entrepreneurial spirit. Like, you know, when I, even when I was a kid, I used to try to sell like every little weird, you know, pot that I would make out of the clay in my yard, you know, like that kind of stuff. Right. And, uh, and so for me, it's always felt kind of fun, which I also know is not the case for many people, but just oh, yeah. that idea of like, I'm going to make something and then I'm going to, I'm going to allow it to be out in the world and maybe I'll make money from it. Like to me, that's always felt somewhat like a game or like, like a, like, I don't know. I've enjoyed that part of it too, which wow. is, um, I think a huge part of my success, you know, is that I'm, I'm not afraid to put myself out there. I'm not afraid to get rejected because I know that I'm just doing it because I love it and I have to do it. So, wow, you know, that, that sells is, itself. that's like a million dollar <laughs> idea right there. Cause so many artists, no matter what the creative field, they think of marketing and sales. They often actually refer to it as a necessary evil, you know, and how empowering totally. is, is, is that? But you described it as fun. You know, and so, and, and, I, and, and I've I, always yeah. done, yeah, I've always done fun. I've always made it fun. You know, I've, I used to do these little online sales that I would, I would send out to my email list, like at 10, 10 AM on this date, the new mini paintings will be available and I would kind of build it up. And then, I, you know, on that day I would post my new little paintings and sure enough, like they would mostly always sell. And, you know, I kind of made it this interesting thing and I, I yeah it's so much about how you how you look at things I yeah, mean I th that's true for everything I, I think people are way too because I've been teaching music marketing for a couple of decades now and, I, and I, I think people get way too serious about it you know they consider it's the business part of music and really yeah. it should be just as playful and creative as, as the art as the songwriting or in your case in the, yeah. as the painting and then you mentioned the yeah. belief and the role that your parents played uh, there's a couple things about, about that so one if somebody doesn't have the most supportive family maybe yeah. for whatever reason are there other ways to maybe to get that confidence I think so I mean I think it's seeking out people that see you in that way who support you I mean beyond my parents I had you know a couple adult figures growing up that were just like all about support and and for some people it might be like a real um, thing they need to seek out in the world but you know it's like find those mentors I mm -hmm. guess you could call it um, who will be that person for you and I think that that's like invaluable, you know, to have someone that believes in what you're doing and can be that voice of support. Absolutely. And you mentioned that, yeah, the yeah. dedication and the craft and the 10,000 hours is actually, I think, a reference to uh, Malcolm Gladwell's book, Outliers, where he talked about uh, most people to yeah. reach excellence in their field. On average, it's 10,000 hours in around 10 years, you know, and he had a lot of examples yeah. in there. And so people need to have patience probably with the craft of whatever their art is, but also patience with building the career to the point where they can, you know, make, make a living doing it or whatever. Absolutely. It actually, like, drives me a little nuts when people are so anxious to – have their craft be their their work like they want it to happen like right away and it's just like you know I think it's really easy to compromise your craft if you're really driven by that so much that's why I came up with these other um, ways of making money that felt good you know like it wasn't like I was selling my soul I was right. doing massage and teaching yoga and like doing things that actually now feed my teaching which is interesting but um, you know it's like just be patient with it so that you can truly find your own voice, find your own style, um, and not be so like, uh, you know, stressed about needed, needing to get paid. Cause it's, it's a slow, pro it's, it's truly a slow process. I mean, so I guess there's overnight successes yeah. sometimes, there's but always like exceptions, but they're rare, you yeah. know, it's rare. Yeah. It's like you really, and I mean, honestly, I'm, I'm so, I'm like proud of the fact that I put in the years that I've put in because I, I really feel comfortable that my style is my style and my process is my process. And I, you know, it was like, I've put, I put the time into to get to the point I'm at now, so right, and, and even though I'm a big proponent of self-employment and being entrepreneurial and all that, and I, you know, I, I definitely think yeah. people that, that are drawn to that should pursue it. But there's a there is a certain uh, 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 logic to either hanging on to a day job or working a part-time job, you know, just to to, to, to make sure your financial uh, minimums are met so that right. you're not so desperate with your art, you know. Yeah, yeah, and ideally, I mean, it's the whole you know, fifty dollars an hour, ten hours a week thing. It's like ideally, you don't have to have a full time job because I always knew that that would kill my art. You know, like yeah. I, I, I just know myself, and I know forty hours a week doing anything is like I'm not going to do something else after that, probably. You know, mm -hmm. for a lot of hours. Oh, so yeah. I, I really was careful around that one, and like really tried to keep it minimal so that I did have the time and space to pursue my passion. So. Awesome, great <laughs> advice. So we discussed a lot of positive things about what's led to your success as an artist, but everyone encounters, you know, challenges, hurdles they have to face. And so could you maybe pinpoint 
a particular challenge, business or creative that you faced and, and tell us how you overcame it and what you learned from it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, I think I spoke briefly to the idea of just, you know, it is selling original paintings, which is, you know, how I made my living for many years. Um, only, um, it's no, it's not easy. It's like months can go by when no one buys a painting. So I was definitely faced with that like early on, just realizing like, wow, I'm in this, I'm in this career that's completely, um, imp it's not predictable at all. So that was a big sort of challenge. And that's where I guess I put into place the other sort of more consistent work. Um, and then, you know, I, I went to art school and had absolutely like no, um, training in business <laughs> right. along with the art school. I mean, I think we did have one class that touched on some things, um, but honestly, the most, I remember the most impactful day of my whole art school career was this one day that these professional artists came in, like real working artists, and they came in and it was like a panel discussion where we could ask them questions. And it was just like, oh my God, like there's this whole other huge, I mean, I was like 17 at the time, so I, I had no idea what it actually looked like to be a professional visual artist. So getting all this information was like so valuable. But, you know, honestly, like I, I really didn't have any business training at, at all. So learning about taxes and even about how to make a website and how to market, like I feel like I kind of just was like making it up as I went along. Right. And uh, that's not always the best way to do it. <laughs> <laughs> there's, you know, like reinventing the wheel a little bit there. So. Although everybody does have to figure, I think there is this misconception though that everyone else has it figured out and they got the secret decoder ring, sure. you know, code and that, and then, yeah. and that if I only knew exactly what steps to take <laughs> and that like you're paralyzed with fear they're going to do something wrong, where a lot of this is just getting, stepping out there and like we, like we talked about that playful attitude of I'm yeah. just going to try a bunch of stuff and see what works because yeah. there's, there's no one path to success for in any field, you know, your, your route might yeah. not work for someone else. Um, it's true. That's a really good point. And yeah, and I think there's so much value gained in like figuring it out on your own in your way. And I also think taking like business one on one might have been a good idea for me at some point. Along the right. way. So, <laughs> but so I'm curious. I don't know if you, yeah, if, in case it doesn't come up, uh, you mentioned selling original paintings. I know there are different ways that artists can make money. And so obviously yeah. the original paintings uh, was I guess was your primary thing early, early on. Now, did you ever go into selling prints? Too, I think you. Oh some, man, I yeah. yeah. I mean, now I definitely have prints and it's all dialed. But you know, back in the day when you know you were, I was working with so such little money, so I was trying to do everything kind of on the cheap and hand you know DIY and things like that. And I ended up wasting so much money by trying to like make my own prints, and they just ended up looking terrible. Or trying to take my own photographs of my paintings when I don't really know how to work a camera. Like that's the kind of stuff where it's like. Yeah. Now I realize that, you know, let the people that are experts in photography of fine art take the photos of the paintings and like let the printer make the prints and like, but you know, back, back early on, it's like, I didn't even have the funds really to, to do that. So, um, yeah, I ended up just wasting money a lot. <laughs> and I see like on, on your website, you have a whole series of, of your uh, images that are available as, and I just learned this term in recent months, like in the past year, I, even though I've been a painting off and on for like 40 years. It was only in the past year that I sort of went more public and got more active with it. Um, but I, I, I discovered this term gicle print, <laughs> gicle, yes. which is it's a fancy French word. word. For, yeah. Fancy <laughs> word for like laser printer or, or, la or, or something. Um, but, uh, but you, yeah. you, you sell gicle prints on stretched canvas, which I recently found a source yeah. for that too. And you have them, people can select them and, you know, order them right on your, on your site. Um, yeah. and does that fill the gaps when the original, I mean, what, it, cause how's that balance out with the it's, originals? Yeah, and it's a really great thing. I mean, the price point is just so entirely different that for a lot of people, the G clay prints, you know, that's what, that's what works for them. And they're, you know, they're like sizable, like canvases that like looks like, and they really do look quite lovely like people are always like wow that's a print looks like an original so yeah. I think it's great you know I really get that a lot of people don't have a couple thousand dollars lying around for an original painting so um, yeah it's a really it's a really great thing and I'm I know there's some artists that are like you know it's all about the original and I don't make prints for whatever reasons and for me it's like sure the original is awesome you know like to have the actual like 
feeling of like the artist made it is amazing. But a lot of times it's the image that carries a lot of um, power. And so if you can produce that in a way that's really well done, you know, I, I love the fact that the image can be, you know, enjoyed by more than one person. Right. And I know <laughs> so, with your originals earlier, you were yeah. saying that you just kind of paint, you know, to you don't paint with selling in mind. You're just kind of satisfying your own creative soul. Yeah. And then luckily people like those. Now, do you ever do like, like some artists, <laughs> Or do you do like custom work if somebody says, Commissions. you know, yeah, a, yeah, a commission? Yeah, I, I would like a, something like that, but with an eagle <laughs> instead of a whatever. Right. I've done plenty of commissions over the years. Um, it's funny. I was just talking yesterday to a gallery owner who was asking me, are you still doing commissions? And I said, you know, um, I'm in a very blessed place right now of not depending on all my income from my originals. And, and because my process is such that I don't know what I'm doing before I start. It's very spontaneous and that is at the heart of my work and that's what I teach. And so for me to create a painting for someone else the way they want it actually kind of goes like counter to right. my way. Um, so I would do it in very specific situations, basically when the person tells me I could do anything I want. <laughs> but they want this size. Like, I could do that. Um, but, yeah, for the most part, I, I'd rather, you know, I just tell people, you know, I'm very, very prolific. I paint all the time. So just keep an eye out. And I want people to fall in love with something that they've seen that's a little more ideal. So. Right. Cool. Well, that, and that's and that's a great that yeah. speaks to you. sometimes you have to do what you have to do early in, on in your career and even do maybe stuff that isn't yeah. 100% satisfying even though it's related to your field um, but as you get yeah. more established you can pick and choose the types of things exactly. that, you work, that you work on so okay so here's the next set of questions and I you know I always struggle with every interview that I do to sort of simplify and explain this in a concise way and I always botch it up so basically I want to <laughs> I would imagine that you could go back and and talk to your younger self I don't know if that was that eight years ago like when you were star or, or how what what you, you could pick the, the age and you and you were going to give yourself some yeah. advice in three parts and it was basically mm -hmm. um, you know basically looking back what would you do the same uh, what would you like avoid what were the time wasters and then what would you have like brought into the mix earlier you know and so let's take those one mm -hmm. at a time look looking back what would yeah. you have done what was right that you would have done exactly the same the same um, you know I think the thing that has really like got me to where I'm at right now is that I've always done what's exciting to me like I've always like I've always followed the energy and I've um, I've made you know I li I've lived very simply along the way um, in order to not get bogged down with lots of other expenses um, you know I've really prioritized what lights me up I guess is oh, a nice. simple way to say it yeah and, and uh, prioritize what lights me up what lights right? me up huh. <laughs> That's a cool yeah one. it's really true and um, you know whether that was like the healing arts that I was in, because that was a passion as well, or like the personal transformation work that I've done in a number of different realms, um, you know, or the art making. It's like I've always just done what's interesting to me, and I and I haven't really strayed too far off of that. And um, what that's actually done for me is that now, um, you know, this teaching that I do, the, the the book, the all the courses, everything. It's like this really cool blend of all these passions that I've been pursuing over the course of my life. And I'm only 38, so it's like, you know, I'm, I'm not yeah. that old, but, but I've been pretty passionate, you know, from the time I can remember being alive. So um, I've always gone for that. And now it's like even at age 38, I feel like I do have something that's really authentic to offer, which is a blend of you know, creativity with body movement, with, um, you know, uh, mindfulness, meditation, like all of these things are things that I have been studying for 20 years. And I am able to um, blend them in a way that's, that's really unique to my life experience. That's and cool. um, that is something I'm really grateful for. And like, I, now that I'm at this point, I can look back, I'm like, oh, that was like, that's why yeah. it's all happening like this. So, I, I think a lot, a lot of yeah. people are res, are resistant to uh, like have. As, if you used to watch Seinfeld and George would say, "Worlds are colliding," but, but a lot of people are, are, are <laughs> think they have to car, car, compartmentalize their lives. Like, like, oh, I don't want to tell yeah. people about this thing that I enjoy because it'll confuse them about my music or, or my art. But I, but I really think you can have a more holistic approach and, and blend I, all those. I things. think you can too. I think you can too. I think in this day and age, it's like. 
that kind of niche um, is is actually really powerful because because of the internet we have access to the world, <laughs> and you know in the world there's going to be a lot of other people that sort of have the, those similar passions that might be attracted to you because. You know, it's like I get this all the time where people are like, oh, my God, I love that you blend yoga and art. Mm -hmm. And to me, I'm like, duh, like that's, that's like such an obvious one to me. But the truth is not a lot of people are offering things that do that kind of blend. So I think um, I used to I used to agree with what you said where I'm like, I have to have my painting and then all my other stuff is this other part of my life over here. And it's been really cool to let it all just like really connect. You know, it makes me feel like more whole <laughs> and uh, more That's expressed. Like, it's all about being an authentic expression of who you are and then attract the people yeah. that are like-minded with, with all those things or, or yeah. Um, so, so that's cool. So, so looking back, yeah. um, what would you like, were there, were there some time wasters or some mistakes you made going down a road that maybe looking back, you realize, oh, I wish I should have really never done that because I was misguided. <laughs> you know, um, well, I spoke a little bit about the, you know, the photography and that kind of stuff. And it's like, man, I wish I would have just like gotten a micro loan and been able to document my early work well, because that's something that's lost once it's sold. You know, if you sell a painting and you don't have an image of it, right. it's gone to the world. And I have, you know, so like all my work prior to like 2008 is pretty much, you know, gone which is a bummer <laughs> just more just to show people where I've come from um you know I had these like really crappy you know little like photographs that I took <laughs> that I've scanned but um yeah so that's you know just documenting your work well is really important as a visual artist um you know there's there's definitely like shows and things that I was in that at the end I was like man that was like such a so much energy for nothing you know like some like these like street fairs and things like that where you're just like I had to have a booth and then you have to sit there for four days and like all this kind of stuff like I, I learned some things about you know just like where you know it's really important to find out the, where your work um, is most effectively seen you know and right. honestly I, you know a lot of like coffee shops and places like that if they're a nice coffee shop and a lot of people go there can actually be better than like a gallery that's Oh, yeah. You know, you know, so that's interesting. So I've never been like a snobby, like got to only show in a gallery type of person. Like I'm like, just get it out there. But at the same time, you know, be, be smart. I've learned a little bit about, you know, if it's going to be in a dark hallway or in their bathroom, like, you know, maybe yeah. not. <laughs> <laughs> I love to see, I love to see the artwork in bathrooms. And I wonder about that because on one hand, it's like everyone's goes there. And so you have this kind of a captive, <laughs> captive audience. Time. But I don't know if that's the best display, you know, or a showcase for your work, maybe. Yeah, right? I've I've definitely shown paintings in bathrooms. I will say that. <laughs> yeah, yeah, and hopefully sold sold some. Um, uh, but that's cool. Yeah. So uh, and and yeah, I'm glad that you take that indie, yeah, gallery, non traditional approach. It's certainly my, been my message with music marketing, and you can apply to art and, and my also my yeah. my route as a writer and an author. Um, and so, uh, is there anything? Yeah. What What would you uh, have? like pulled into the mix earlier and this is advice to your younger self and also be advice to aspiring artists to what should they do early that maybe yeah mm -hmm. you missed the boat on if you could do it all over again you know and it's funny because it's like you can give yourself that advice but you have to grow into those lessons i i think really what i've noticed um about myself that's really changed is like just how much more clear i am in my communication how much more in my own power i am as a woman now and I used to just be such a such a like people pleaser and like oh sure yeah I can do that okay yeah definitely you know like really and that's part of just you know establishing yourself as well like you kind of have to maybe be a little bit more that way but you know it's now it's like I say I say no way more than I say yes these days and um, I'm just you know it's like I only work with people that I really like that's a huge right. one, you know. It's like if I don't like you and I don't want to go have coffee with you just as a friend, I probably don't want to work with you, you know. And right. I'm I'm getting really like, I'm getting very specific about that, <laughs> and it makes my life so much more awesome because I'm surrounded by people I really respect and love. And oh, awesome! Yeah, so that's that's great yeah. advice. And you know, yeah, you you have to learn by 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 doing that with 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 yeah. age. But I guess the people can learn to do that earlier. I guess yeah, more, yeah, and especially with artists, I think with musicians too, it's like it's so easy to be taken advantage of. You know, it's like they're like, "Oh, this is going to be great exposure for you," uh, but yeah. then you're but then you're in a dark hallway, and you you know, it's like whatever. So just like standing in your power as an artist, you know, and that you that it is a job and it is legit, and you know, it's not like you're just out oh, some artist, you know. So I don't know, it takes time to get that in yourself. I think <laughs> absolutely. 
So, Flora, I know we're both authors. In fact, in a moment, I'm going to ask you a little bit more about your uh, your uh, book. Uh, so, I, but I assume you're uh, an avid reader too. So, I always like to ask people: Was there a book, or can you name a book that actually like changed your life? And what was it? And and why did it do that? Yeah, this is such a great question. I had to sit with it for a minute to really like, yeah, to really find the one. But you know, there's a book. Um, it's called Spilling Open, and it's by Sabrina Ward Harrison. Wow. And she's, um, it's funny, I'm, I'm actually friends with her now, and she lives in Portland, but she's about my age and wrote this book that was essentially um, her journal pages being published when she was in her early 20s. Oh, wow. And I remember the moment, I was living in Seattle, I remember the moment where I was in the bookstore roaming around and uh, saw her book. And it was like, even just from the cover, I was like, you know, like, what is this book? It's very like attractive to me. And I, I opened it up and I was just lost, you know, and I scraped together my pennies at the time and got this book. And um, it was the first time that I'd ever really seen an artist, especially a young female artist um, like of contemporary, you know, like someone who's doing it now, um, really be able to just put their their words, their thoughts, their art, like all of it in this really raw, authentic, vulnerable kind of way, like put together in a book. Like it was, she's very much a pioneer in that way. I think there's lots of books that have come out since then that, you know, allow artists to really like show themselves. But, you know, I think she was probably the first person who really did that. And um, it was like, it just gave me a lot of permission to, um, to be with my, you know, at the time, tumultuous, you know, vulnerable, figuring out who I am kind of self and let that all come through my art. So, um, so yeah, it wasn't a book that was just a regular, like, reading book. It was it was a visual, like, oh, wow. experience. That's, that's, <laughs> yeah, so cool. I'm going to go with that. As you were describing it earlier, yeah, I was almost I was gonna, almost going to chime in and say it sounds like she gave you permission to fully express yourself, too, and then you used that exact word before I could even – Yeah get it out, out there. But, yeah. so, but sometimes I guess we have to, yeah, see that, you know, other people sort of lead the way and inspire us. And I'm sure you're now doing that for other people and artists, you know, giving them permission to, yeah, to be that's, freer. That's, that's what I, I know. I almost want to add like permission giver into my little, you know, <laughs> description of what I do. Cause it is what I do. It's like, that is the essence of what I do. Truly. Inspirationalist yeah. and permission giver. I like, yeah. I like, I like <laughs> that. Um, so I'm going to ask you about your book, but while I'm thinking of it, cause I might forget this but you know I've been and I've also been, also been kind of I, I gotta kind of go through spurts with painting where I'll do like a couple of weeks I'm just do a bunch of stuff and then I'll you know weeks will go by before I but I've been on a roll lately and one of the things I actually got from your uh from your book was using my fingers instead of brushes I actually like well, would squirt down the <laughs> canvas and just, just apply it just like a kit like a, a you know a first grader would with with finger pen, yeah. paints and it's like a whole different approach and look you know and texture to the uh, paint and that was that came out of your out of yeah. your out of your book nice. and so while we're on the topic of, tool yeah of of uh, <laughs> how did that come up but you said that they approached you or to, did you didn't you didn't seek out a like an agent or a publisher yeah. or whatever how did that yeah no in fact i never ever thought about writing a book in my entire life <laughs> so that was not something that i was um aspiring to i you know, the, the story goes like this, basically, I'd been a full-time artist, and I just hit this wall about um, four years ago, where I realized, you know, my dream job of being a full-time painter was actually not satisfying on a lot of levels, um, mainly that I was isolated in my studio, not even knowing who was buying my work anymore, because it was all just like, take it to the gallery, get a check in the mail, you know, like, it just, I, I had this real big service piece of me, and like, I'm a people person, and I like helping, and like, being, I don't know. I just like activation from being around people, and, and the so community and all that stuff. Yeah. Yeah. So it was really like a trip to get to this point and realize, like, oh no, like <laughs> this isn't actually maybe my dream job after all. And I was at a real crossroads. I had no idea what the dream job actually was. Um, and at this at this point, I met um, Anahata Kotkin, who's the owner of um, this company, Papaya, that I now license my work with and make bags and journals and all this kind of groovy product stuff that she does. And um, we were having breakfast and I was explaining my conundrum and she said, well, what about teaching? And it was just like, I hadn't even ever thought about it. I'd been a yoga teacher for many years, never thought about teaching art. Wow. And I was like, huh. <laughs> now I'm like, how did I never think about it? But anyways, I had never thought. So she wrote a blog post and she's a, she's a pretty well-known person and wrote a blog post and introduced me as their new artist. 
And at the very end said she's thinking about teaching workshops. And it was like the spark that set everything off because the next day my inbox was filled with people wanting to take the workshop, Nice. the, the workshop that like didn't exist. Didn't exist um, yeah. And then, <laughs> and I got invited to teach at a place called Squam Art Workshops, which is in New Hampshire. And I I had no idea at this point that there was this whole huge culture around art workshops and mostly women going to places and learning from different teachers and being together and you know having this whole creative experience. I didn't even know this was happening, um, but suddenly I said yes to this thing and I showed up and taught 60 people over the course of three days and it was like my life changed. I, I honestly just, I felt that that's what all of the years of everything had been building up to. Wow. And a week, uh, yeah, it was really like that. It was kind of interesting. Um, and a, one week later after teaching that art workshop, I got a call from Quarry, which is the publishing company that did my book, asking me if I wanted to write a book. <laughs> wow, that, was, that all happened really quick. <laughs> really quick. I mean, honestly, it's been like, and then from that, it's just been like a crazy uh, whirlwind of opportunities and like yeah. worlds opening up to me. Um, so of course I said, yes, I'll write a book, even though I didn't have any idea what that book was going to be like. And um, I just dove into it. And, and I also, you know, after I taught that first workshop, started getting invitations to teach this thing, uh, you know, it just kind of spread. Um, a lot of the people that took my first workshop were bloggers because a lot of people that go to these workshops are bloggers. Anyways, it all just sort of, you know, you get 20 people that write a blog about it, and then it just goes from there. So um, and aren't you going suddenly to, I was flying to... Like Ireland and Southeast Asia and different places, right? Or... Yeah, I mean, I, I'm teaching in Ireland next year. Um, I've been teaching in Bali the last two years. I, I've taught in Australia and Mexico, all over Europe, you know, all over the States. Um, yeah, so like lots of, you know, lots of, places and people and travel and just going for it right. <laughs> and uh, I'm teaching tomorrow here in Portland I have a studio that I teach in so um, cool. yeah so that's the book just kind of came with all of it you know it's like this big yes from the universe that was just like this is your what you're supposed to be doing and I could not say no because it all felt so good <laughs> and if you had to describe the book and sort of what what makes it a little bit you know sets it apart maybe from other art books how would you describe it yeah like brave intuitive painting right is it yeah, it's like I almost wish it was like um, categorized under like the self-help book um, category because it's it's very much um, not a book that tells you exactly how to make a painting like me. Um, I'm not really interested in that. You know, I'm not interested in producing a bunch of mini me's. I'm interested in empowering people. <laughs> um, I'm interested in empowering people to find their own creative freedom. And what I've noticed over and over again is that people for whatever stories have come their way, if it was a, an art teacher or a parent or a whatever, people break down at some point and think they're not artists. And, you know, like I used to think that, oh, that's for somebody else. And I believe we're all artists. Mm -hmm. You know, I'm like, we're, we're human, we're creative, thus we're artists. And it's just about stepping out of our own way and just starting, which is a huge piece, is like just that, like just get paint moving on the canvas. So like my first exercise in my workshops is actually blindfolded finger painting to like really great music, you know? Okay. And I get a whole room of people just dancing and fingers and like, you know, that's the starting point. That's obviously we do lots of stuff from there, but I, I, I like to, to get people in their bodies. There's a whole chapter in the book about, you know, staying present, that it's not just like this, it's like a full body experience, and if you can find a, a flow in your in your whole body, that that's going to translate into your brush marks. So you know, we stand when we paint, and we dance, and there's music. I just try to make it fun, really, because I, I think there's so much shit around like pressure. It has to be the certain way, or you know, there's step by step to make it this way, and you have to know perspective, and you have to make it look real, and you have. And I'm just like, all that goes out the window in my workshops. And it's, I mean, I do teach about color and like, you know, so people aren't making just mud because right. yeah. <laughs> that's the thing, you know, it's like you have to understand how color mixes. So we definitely learn some basic stuff about that. But then it's just about, you know, what feels good? Like, where does your heart want to take you here? What image is emerging naturally? You know, it's, so it's very like intuitive and um, it's very fun. You know, people are shocked at what they make. And a lot of times people come that have never even painted or they haven't painted since they were a kid and they walk out of my workshops, we paint big too, get them going on big canvases, and they walk out with these like really cool paintings that they can't even believe came out of them. <laughs> wow, so. Yeah, so fun and passion and expressing your heart's desires are common themes that I'm starting to... <laughs> 
Let's see here. That's great. <laughs> Everybody's craving that stuff these days. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. So let's talk about uh, future plans, Flora. I know you mentioned, uh, you know, like a few years ago, there was a point where you had sort of a transition and led to the teaching and all of that. Are there, are there currently any other like new directions, anything you see in the future, a big, hairy, audacious goal that, uh, <laughs> that, uh, that, that, that you have we should be aware of? Well, like I just mentioned, you know, everything's gone really fast the last few years. So I, I, I've, um, I haven't had a lot of time to vision the next big thing because the next big things just keep kind of coming. So um, I think, you know, one thing that's really exciting to me right now is collaborative art. Um, I've been doing some live paintings um, like at big parties and things like that, like where I'm on the stage with, with musicians. Um, with a, a friend of mine, Lindsay Links, and we, we work on like one big, huge canvas, but together. So oh. we're painting simultaneously to the music and it's layers and it's like we are dancing and the, the painting just evolves and people just think it's like the most amazing thing to watch because it's oh, pretty cool. cool. Yeah. And so I have a lot of energy around that. Um, the workshop I'm teaching this week is actually with an emphasis on collaborative work. So actually having two people painting on the same canvas or more than two people. Um, I have, I, you know, there's a potential another book in there around that. I, I just find that when one thing that gets in people's way is this preciousness around like it's mine and it has to look good and blah, blah, blah. And if you can open up and surrender to someone else's, um, you know, marks and hand coming into your space. I think it's like the metaphors there are kind of ridiculous and can go on and on about just how we need each other and how right. things can be a lot more interesting when we're open to sharing and, you know, collaborating. And so um, I, I've been visioning like big collaborative murals and things like that. Um, I love painting big. So, you know, I'm like, the bigger, the better. Yeah. Um, but I love this, this live event painting stuff is really exciting to me. Um, and then more teaching. You know, I, I've been um, really blessed to have had, I think I've had about 2,500 people take my online course. And just the testimonials we get there are pretty stunning, actually. Um, like just like on a transformational level, like that, that people are like, yeah, you freed me up with my painting, but you also got me to see how I can be more brave in my life and how I can be more in the flow and listen to my heart and, you know, all these yeah. things that the course is really in, you know, like in the book is, are really about those things are about living as well as painting. So, um, I, I feel like I'm on a bit of a mission now, <laughs> um, to spread this kind of word. I think it's, it's a message that I feel like I'm here to deliver for whatever reason. Um, and so just, growing it and reaching more people and hopefully helping people in yeah. all kinds of ways. You're on, yeah. you're on fire girl. <laughs> that, <laughs> that's awesome. Yeah, um, so I, I know uh, the, the, to the teaching thing. Yeah. I just wanted to, me to mention, I think it's, a, it's an area that a lot of artists, whether they're musicians or visual artists or writers or whatever, don't, they kind of overlook that aspect. And I, and I think um, uh, whether it's in live settings, an online course, a, you know, an information product, which can be a book or some other or an ebook or whatever. And it's, yeah. a, I think it's a missed opportunity for some people that are, that are, that are cut out for the teaching, you know, um, yeah. in whatever, uh, and it's not only a way they can serve, you know, again, but it's also yeah. a potential way to support themselves too. And, and, uh, yeah. it, I've been to a number of, uh, 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 like music shows or concerts where there were live artists. Uh, I've never done it myself. I don't know. I feel a little kind of uneasy about doing it myself, but it's it, but but I've never seen anyone collaboratively paint live, and I've never seen them dance. They're usually off to the side of the <laughs> stage or whatever, you know, just kind of doing yeah. their thing while the music's playing. But I love right. that idea right. that yeah, I can I can see that dancing and splashing paint and getting dirty and how cool. Totally, yeah, it's pretty it's pretty fun. <laughs> um, and then let's just uh, finally, uh, yeah. Well, so where can people find out about you and the book and the workshops and all yeah. that stuff? Uh, well, my, my website's a great central place to find out about everything. Um, you can get there through floraboli.com. Um, it's also called braveintuitiveu.com. Um, both will take you to the same place. And yeah, I have my I have a newsletter that's actually the best place to find out about the workshops, the in-person workshops. Um, they tend to, I only take about 15 people at a time and they, they usually sell out in like a day, which is a blessing for me. But um, so if, if anyone is interested in joining me in person for a workshop, I highly recommend signing up for the newsletter because that's the first place I announce it before I put it on my website and everywhere else. So um, yeah, my next online course starts at the end of September. It's a five-week course. Um, and yeah, it's a pretty 
it's a pretty beautiful journey. It's lots of videos. Um, you know, I show the creation of three paintings from start to finish over the course of the five weeks. And then there's all kinds of other exercises, um, just getting you more freed up and in your brave self. And um, yeah, there's also a, a private Facebook group attached to the online course. So I think that's one of the coolest things actually about the course is that people, you know, hundreds of people that are taking it all from all around the world, it's pretty international, um, find each other there. And like these really cool connections are made and I, and the Facebook groups live on, you know, for however, however long Facebook lives on. Right. So, um, <laughs> so yeah, it's a pretty, if, if anyone's like craving to find that kind of community, um, it's, it, it's out there, you know, and, and cool. it's a great way to connect into it. And you mentioned the email list and you had, you know, recommended people get on it. And that's like, I've, I've always, uh, I think more artists and pe people of all types really need to, to emphasize the importance of their email list. Do you find, do you, do you sell paintings through email? Is that one of your, is that a, a, a pretty strong marketing tool for you or? Yeah, I mean, I, I'm pretty, I only s send out a, a newsletter once um, every couple months actually. Oh, and okay. I try to Discovery, make them yeah. like, yeah, so, so yeah, I do a weekly, um, more of like a, you know, seeds of inspiration kind of newsletter that's just like me sort of um, giving tips on the painting process and on like living. <laughs> and those are, that's a beautiful like weekly um, thing that people really enjoy. But yeah, the actual newsletter is like once or twice a month. Um, I mean, you know, either once every, a month or every other month. <laughs> right. um, and that's um, where I announce, you know, the upcoming retreats and the courses and um, new paintings. And yeah, so I'll put my new work on there and just get people to, you know, check out my latest stuff that's yeah. going on. So, and then when I, and I forgot to, when you were talking about the book earlier, um, I think I read on your website, is it sold like 25 to 30,000 copies? It's, yeah, it's over 20,000. I'm not sure where okay. it's at exactly, but it's over 20,000. It's been really up, you know, up in the top you know, seven or eight um, painting books on Amazon since it came out. So it's only been out yeah, Michael's a year. Yeah, carrying it now. It's, it's been yeah, a year and a couple months now. That's so awesome. So it's got it's got wings of its own. I don't even I don't even know. That's fantastic. <laughs> well, I'm so happy for your yeah, success and, and you've got. I mean, your attitude just shines, and it's and and, and I think that's a, I mean a, a big uh, part of why you're doing as well as you are but you're just a great example of someone who's taking their passion is living a full expression of who they are and you're yeah. you're able to support yourself financially and then uh, do yeah. you have a studio in portland or something that you want to mention if people yeah. are, in, are in town or in your area well um i have you know like right now i'm in my private studio where i where i paint in and and i do some studio visits here if people are interested in in looking at the work um but i i'm actually a part of of another studio that's downtown that's called Soulshine Studio, and there's four of us that inhabit that space, and it's more, it's a, uh, yeah, every, every, it's all women, and we're all, we all kind of have our thing kind of going pretty strong, and it's a great just gathering place, and I teach my workshops there, and okay, it's a, cool. it's a wonderful space to awesome. check out, so. All right, yeah. well, Flora, thanks a lot. You've been very generous with your time and with your uh, advice, and so uh, I really appreciate it. Thanks a lot for, for doing this, yeah. inter this interview. It's awesome. Thanks for having me. It's been really fun chatting with you. You so, better thanks. believe it. So thanks for watching. I'll be back again with another episode of The Creative Entrepreneur probably next week. So long for now. <laughs>